Hello? Hey, it's Ronnie with Punch Gabby. Hi, it's Lisa. How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Oh, I'm not doing too bad. Trying to keep uh, away from everybody so I don't get the flu <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Going around. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who have I got there? You got me, Ronnie, um, you got Dan, and you got Jarrett. So you got the, the three coolest guys in the band. <laughs> <laughs> so go around and introduce yourselves. All right. Well, my name is Ronnie. I play guitar for the Punch Gabby. Uh, my name is Dan. I also play guitar for Punch Gabby. My name is Jarrett, and I am the singer of the band. Mm. <laughs> nice strong voice you got there. <laughs> so give me a little bit of history about uh, Punch Cabby and like uh, how it came about and then how you got the name and your sound. Okay, so Punch Cabby started back in 2008. Um, I responded to a Craigslist ad of uh, our two two uh, original singers from the band. Um, they were looking to, for musicians, so we got together, um, went over what kind of what we wanted to do, um, the directions that we were going, and um, found a couple other guys, and we rented up by the hour spot just to see how things would go. And, um, yeah, I mean, definitely it, it clicked between the um, the three of us, me and the two singers, so um, the other guys that – came out that time. I mean, they obviously they didn't make the final cut. So, um, yeah, the, me and uh, the two singers kind of started scouting out other uh, other musicians. We wanted another guitar player, um, obviously a bassist and drummer. Um, so we get we finally found some guys, um, mm-hmm. and the bass player didn't work out. The other guitar player didn't work out. We pretty much fired them um, at the same time. <laughs> and then... Um, then Ryan replied to another ad that we posted on Craigslist, and he came out, creeped the shit out of me. <laughs> he was all apart. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he uh, he learned him. He was really good, and um, he still creeps me out to this day. But uh, <laughs> uh, that's all right. Uh, and then, yeah, a uh, couple of years went by. We had a drummer we were working with, and um, we were just wanting to play more shows and um, do more. And he wasn't able to, you know, he was a little bit older. He had a family. Um, so, yeah, we ended up parting ways with him, and we picked up Mike, our current drummer, and um, he pretty much nailed the audition right when he came out. He knew all the songs that uh, we asked him to uh, learn, and he nailed it. So, um, so, yeah, I think that was back in, like, 2009 or 2010. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember. But, um, yeah, then uh, we picked up uh, – well, we actually parted ways with the other singer because we had there was two singers at the time, so we had Kyle still singing for us, um, and we picked up another guitar player, uh, this guy Tony. He was with us for a couple of years. We recorded Intimidate FM with him. Hey, she wanted the history, man. That's <laughs> 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 a short verse. And, yeah, so after Intimidation FM, I mean, things weren't working out with Tony, so parted ways with him. Um, and then we picked up our other guitar player, Frankie Pecorero, which he is, uh, we knew him from way back in the day. We used to play a bunch of shows in our older bands. Um, and he was with us up until just recently. Um, and then we pretty much weren't liking, we were wanting to go in a different direction than uh we were at the time as far as like music we were writing and vocals and Kyle, our singer that we had, he was, um, he was a hardcore singer, you know, not very little singing. And we wanted to start branching out more towards actual singing. And, um, he didn't, he really kind of fought, fought us on it. So, um, ultimately we kind of parted ways with him. And that's when Jared came into the picture. Cause I known this guy since we were, Second grade, little boy. Uh, we played in bands together growing up. We started our first band together as kids. We were like 12. And uh, he came into the picture, and everything changed for the better. Um, and then, oh, uh, shit. I'm 
like you've had enough with somebody else now. Derek can take over from this point. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I joined the band in, uh, I think it was 2013, and I was in the band for about a year, year and a half. We recorded a three-song sampler kind of thing and then a ten-song album, and then I had to leave the band for personal reasons. And they got a singer. They recorded one song with that kid. His name is Skyler. Shout out to Skyler. And then uh, me and Ronnie got together over uh, Christmas of last year, and talked and he was saying that they wanted to get back together with me and so we did that and you know we picked up right where we left off it's always worked out really well with me and ronnie and ryan and mike are a good backbone of the band so uh we parted ways with frank about three or four months ago and dan joined the band shortly after Mm -hmm. that it's been working out really well we are working on an album right now should hopefully be out this year sometime. Um, the, the sound of the band is a collection of everyone's influences, which definitely vary widely. We, we listen to everything from, you know, like I listen to old country all the way to death metal and everything in between. Everything except rap, pretty much, I listen to. And... Everyone else in the band is pretty much the same way. Everyone listens to a different style. So when we get together, we just jam on what sounds good to us. We don't really try to sound like anything in particular. So mm-hmm. uh, it's like a hard rock metal sound. Um, we're working on some stuff that sounds a little different than old Punch Cabby. So it's exciting. The listeners are they got something to look forward to. It's definitely not. It's still, it's still Punch Cabby, but uh, we're expanding our sound a little bit. So, yeah, it's definitely exciting right now in the writing stages. Now, you mentioned that you're coming out with a a new CD. Let's talk about that. Yes. um, We're shooting for 15 songs, and originally we were going to go in the studio this spring, but uh, the writing process, it's going smooth, but it's just, it's a lot. There's a lot to do, so uh, it's getting pushed back. Uh, It's looking more like summer right now. We're going to probably release it late summer, and we want to start playing out uh, this spring and summer as well. So that's going to also, you know, cut into our time as far as writing and recording. Um, But as of now, it's looking like a summer release. It's not titled yet, so I couldn't give you that. But that's really all we got with that. We're going to be recording with Jordan Pop, the same guy we did the last album with, so going to sound good. So are you about to go out on tour um, after you put the, C- the CD out? We are going to tour as much as we can. Yeah, uh, we may even do a little bit of touring before the album's done, just because, like I said, I mean, we're probably 20% done with the writing, um, you know, maybe 25%. So we we got a long way to go, and we want to start playing shows once it gets nice out. So right. it's going to going to be a tough thing to, to try to balance the two the writing and recording with the playing out so um uh yeah but we're going to tour as much as possible this year all right so um where can most of the people find your new music once it's going to be out there is it going to be available everywhere yeah um we're on every single possible platform out there um we just signed a new distribution deal with uh, Red. Um, they're branched off of a Sony. So, um, yeah, they're, we're it's getting actually re-released in, uh, next week. So, I mean, we're on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Google, uh, Xbox. Uh, Xbox as far as <laughs> yeah, we're at the, on TouchTunes. We're mm-hmm. all over the TouchTunes jukeboxes. So, you can, if you want to find us, there is every possible way to do that. Um, Yeah, you could Shazam our music. I mean, you could do it all. (laughs) So, yeah, it's uh, very, uh, very easy to find us everywhere. If you you just start typing in punch, you're going to, some cabbie's going to come up in Google. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's good that you're out there everywhere. Absolutely. Um, 
So, um, in in your past, was there any like ex- anything, any exciting tours or any kind of venues that you were on that really like you felt like this you had really made it? Like it was like you couldn't believe you were there. Like, wow, I'm here with all these great other musicians. Yeah, um, a few shows. I mean, we played um, back in the earlier years. I mean, we, we did a lot of shows. There was this venue called Another Hole in the Wall out in Steger. So, I mean, we played some shows with, uh, we played a couple shows with Taproot, which was pretty cool, you know. It's like, all right, we're kind of getting somewhere. Um, Taproot, we did some shows with uh, I Empire. Um, they're not a band anymore, but the uh, the guitar player, he's um, he's in Nonpoint now. And then, um, the bassist, I mean, he's in St. Ansonia. He was in uh, Day for, uh, Dark New Day. But uh, I'd say probably the biggest uh, show that we played where it's like, holy shit, something's actually going on here was when we played uh, Mayhem Fest a couple years ago Mm -hmm. in uh, Finley Park. And that that was actually the last year that they were doing Mayhem Fest. But, uh, yeah, we played the Victory Record stage. We set the the show off, and uh, that was pretty pretty crazy. I think I almost threw up before we went on. (laughs) Right? (laughs) What? One of my nerves, too, I haven't eaten, and it was like we got there at like 7 in the morning, so, and I was pounding down, all all they had was like rock star energy drinks, so I probably drank about six of those, so I was like jittering all over the place, and uh, so that didn't help. <laughs> all right. But, yeah, I mean, that was probably one of the coolest shows, and then, I mean, first time we played House of Blues, I mean, that was pretty amazing as well. That's like, holy shit, and I've seen so many, so many bands here growing up, and no, I'm playing here, so that was pretty badass. Now, since your start, you've gone through a lot of different changes. Um, you think you're set now and is ready to do something, you know, where do you see yourself going from here as as far as a uh, group or a band? Or uh, what do you want to happen? You know what I mean? <clears throat> well, we want to – I think the, the group of guys that we have now, I mean, that's – this is a – there's nothing more I could ask for, you know, every, every member of this band plays a role in it. Um, I was picking me, me, Mike and Ryan, we've been pretty much been doing this from the start and then picking Jared up. I mean, that was gigantic, you know? Um, I mean, I don't want to play with any other singers. <laughs> so I mean, that's like, that's it. You know, this guy goes, I'm out. So this is game over <laughs> for, for this band. But, um, yeah, he does. A, he does have a great voice. I do have to admit that, and and it's, it's really distinctive. I noticed that when I was listening to the to the music, it's like wow. And then when he yeah. says hello, I was like, well, hello. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> like wow, what a presence. He's got a good voice, that's for sure. You do should do radio. Out of a twelve year old, same thing. No, I mean, definitely he's got a very distinctive voice. And then when, when we picked, when Frank left, you know, we picked up Dan, or Dan picked us up. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Dan, I mean, he's, uh, he's an amazing guitar player. So, I mean, we got a really, we're in a really good situation. And I think everybody's balls to the wall ready to do this. And uh, the only place that goes up, you know, we want to, we want to put out the best music that we possibly can. Um and just take this band as far as it can go. And even if we hit the top and we're still going to play, I mean, we all just love playing music and the music we write. I mean, of course we, we write music for the fans, you know, we want them to love us, but I mean, at the end of the day, we write music that really we, we want to play, you know, music that we enjoy playing ourselves. So guy's the limit right now. We got no plans on quitting. I mean, we're here to uh, take this project as, far as we possibly can is there um a, a show that you're going to do um that's definite for right now any close by like in chicago or somewhere around in there um yeah i think our may 18th may 18th we're playing at the looney bin and uh bradley or uh i think it's Brad, bradley yeah bradley it's right by uh bourbon a so, down south a little bit that's our only confirmed show as of right now just because the venue's awesome and i mean it's the shittiest bar and uh the smallest shittiest bar in the world and everybody plays there so (laughs) so. 
The owner, owner's awesome. You know, he uh, pours shots or pours a bottle of Jack Daniels down her throat. And uh, while we're playing, and yeah, I made a mess of myself there. So uh, yeah, that's our next show. And after that, I mean, it's, we're really trying to focus on riding. We're, we're unfortunately we haven't turned down some really good show offers, but uh, I mean, we got to focus on getting this album out. But once uh, the weather breaks, you know, we're gonna. Like Jarrett was saying, you know, we got to try to balance everything out because I know we're all pretty excited to play. Well, that sounds pretty promising. I hope you get to come to Houston. I'd love to see you guys. I'd love to, too. You guys got a big death metal scene out there. Yes, <laughs> we do. Well, it's, it's everything, you know. We've we've got so many venues and such a variety of music here. It's it's You can go see a a rap band, a country band, and uh, death metal, I mean, almost every single night or something different somewhere. Right there. There's no such thing as a rap band. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. I don't, I don't know. I'm not into rap, so there you go. <laughs> With the computers on stage. <laughs> My buddies there from out in Oklahoma. They go out to uh, Dallas and Houston a lot playing shows. So, yeah, we're hoping to uh, – get down south, um, do some stuff in Oklahoma, and do some show swapping with some friends out there, so it'd be awesome. I like the warmth, so. <laughs> yeah, today it was 72. Oh, well, I, I think yeah, it's you like... You can shove it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, wait, wait, we're getting a cold front. It's going to be in the 50s tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. <laughs> you <can too. laughs> I know you pity me, don't you? <laughs> you got to make your way up to Chicago to see what, uh, what, what cold's really like. <laughs> well, I'm originally from New York, so, you, you know, you ain't got to tell me. I'm from Buffalo, New York, and you can't get no colder than that. That's brutal. Yeah. That's All brutal. Right. <laughs> okay. Heck, you know what it's like. <laughs> Respect granted. Well, see what, you see where I'm at. <laughs> I'm where it's warm. <laughs> hey, you're smart. You moved. You went down south. So. <laughs> We're dumb up here. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys, for having me and taking your time out to uh, sit down and talk with me about your new adventures coming up. And uh, I hope I get to see you soon. And um, have a great evening. Awesome. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Well, Good talking. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>